I want you to do one thing while watching this video and that is watching it through the end because I am going to be talking here about some absolute insane charts which are going to blow your mind and they are going to change the way that you're looking at Bitcoin right now. If you are planning to sell, I repeat, if you are planning to sell, keep in mind this video because this is going to be quite a crazy video. Now, normally what we are used to here is, you know, when we look at Bitcoin is we just have these normal kind of cycles that happen once every few years. And so what we get is we get this large move to the upside followed by every single time these 85% corrections. For one reason, it's always 85%. And we just assume that it's kind of programmed in that Bitcoin makes these cycles to the upside. And, you know, after a while, Bitcoin gets oversold and Bitcoin goes down. And after a halving, Bitcoin goes up. But this video is going to change your perception about what could potentially happen here in the future and what actually triggered here this beer market. Now, first of all, before we're going to get into that, I want to talk here about this chart. As you can see, this is the RSI. Every single time we get oversold on the weekly RSI, Bitcoin is, in, is, is inside a buy moment. Now, before, you know, I'm going to give you bearish or bullish news in this video, whatever, keep in mind we are extremely oversold. Generally, when we have hit this area, every single time Bitcoin exactly bottomed. We are exactly in this kind of area where I'm looking to buy Bitcoin. I think institutions are looking to buy Bitcoin and I really don't expect Bitcoin is going to go much lower. You know, and if you're planning to buy, okay, we haven't hit that 85% correction yet fully, but this is just such a beautiful accumulation zone. And I still believe Bitcoin is going to move here to high levels. Now, I'm going to go to the part that's going to change your mind. But before I'm going to do that, you got to sign up here on my Bybit affiliate link. You may ask why. Well, if you sign up on my Bybit, Bybit affiliate link, you can actually get access to my private VIP channel. Now, again, this is for only active traders, people who are actively trading on Bybit. What you have to do is you have to sign up on my Bybit link. Link is in the description and then send me a DM on Telegram as well. You can see the link in the description. And then you can get access to the private VIP channel and as well get access to this indicator, which allowed me to actually sell Bitcoin at 40,000 US dollar. It basically fully predicted this whole crash to the downside. And it's an amazing indicator that it takes four years of my experience and you can get it for free. Again, you have to be an active trader, sign up on my affiliate link and then send me a DM. Now, I'm going to talk about the crazy chart that is going to absolutely blow your mind. Again, normally we expect Bitcoin here to move inside these cycles, so these four-year cycles, and everybody's kind of like, yeah, this is programmed in, this is normal for Bitcoin to do. But actually, if we look at the dollar index trend, what we can actually see is that basically the dollar index and the Bitcoin price are one-to-one -one correlated. Now, um, let me take it if I'm recording here for a second. Yes, I am. This is going to blow your mind here, okay? So what we can see, so when the dollar index pumped back here in 2015, we exactly saw a large correction here on Bitcoin. Once the parabolic move here on the dollar actually ended, so it ended, you know, about at the end somewhere in 2015, we as well saw the Bitcoin price bottom out. So the dollar had a 25% move to the upside, Bitcoin went down 75%. Okay, next chart here. So what we see is we see the dollar going down 15%. When we had the largest move in the bull market back in 2017, this happened when the dollar here declined to the downside. We saw the Bitcoin price go to from about $6,000, uh, $600, all the way to 20,000 US dollar. Okay, next chart over here. When we came in the beer market and when the Bitcoin price topped out, it exactly topped out when the dollar as well bottomed out. We saw again, exact correlation between the dollar and the Bitcoin beer market. And now again, what have we seen in the last two years? What we saw is we saw COVID happening. We saw large volatility in the dollar index, which of course resulted in a large volatility here on Bitcoin. It crashed all the way to 5,000 US dollar. Then we saw the dollar going down and we saw Bitcoin absolutely explode. Again, when the dollar bottomed out, this happened back in March of 2021. That's when we saw the Bitcoin price as well top out. Now, we came back here for a very short moment and touched 70K which was actually quite surprising because the dollar rallied quite heavily. But once the dollar really started to pick up momentum, again, we saw the Bitcoin price run into a bear market. We have continued and continued to say, see this play out so many times. But people have to understand here is that these things, they happen every single time. And every time it goes through these cycles, it goes up and it goes down. What can we expect now the Bitcoin price to do? That is something that a lot of people are asking. Can we expect the Bitcoin price to maybe even go back to 30K next month? Could we expect cyber section that's going to last us for years? People are wondering what's going to happen. Now, the only thing that I'm going to tell you here, 
the most important thing to look at is the dollar index. How do we know when the dollar in index is going to top out? Well, we're going to have to look at what the Fed is doing. If the Fed is going to lower interest rates, right, because they're right now fighting inflation, they're hiring interest rate, we have to see the Federal Reserve lower their interest rate policy. This probably means that the dollar is going to go down. Now, the reason why the dollar moves up so much in the first place is that what we see in China is losing their economic policy. Japan is not giving a crap about inflation. They don't have that much inflation, but the yen is absolutely going down against the dollar. Then we have the Russia thing going on. Then we as well have Europe going on. Right, Europe has these energy problems and as well, it's not really tapering. Why is it not really increasing interest rates? Well, as you guys probably know, um, Italy, Spain, France, they all have very high debt, so they can't increase interest rates, otherwise these countries go bankrupt. So the only one that's really increasing interest rates and which is trying to tighten their monetary policy is the dollar. That's why we're seeing the dollar going up and that's why we're seeing Bitcoin getting crushed. If we want to see the Bitcoin price here move back to the upside, what do we have to see? We have to see the Fed loosening their economic policy. Now, we have to understand here is that we are already extremely oversold, as I pointed out here, weekly oversold on our side. I don't think we're going to go much lower. But again, we can go sideways here for the next. I think probably we're going to go sideways here for at least the next three months. Again, we saw here about four months of sideways action in the bear market 2019 and eight months of sideways action in the 2015 bear market. So we can go sideways here for quite a long time and, and do something like this. And then maybe at the start of next year, we're eventually going to go back and then, you know, maybe go sideways around a higher level like 30K. And then we're going to have to wait here for halving before we're really going to restart this bull market. But, you know, even if we do something like this, right, we may still come down and hit 15,000 US dollar, which probably would be around that 85% correction that we may, you know, expect. Okay, so this would be about a 78% correction. Not exactly 85% correction, but very, very close to it. Again, we can see sideways action here. We can still come back down to 15K, kind of trade around that level here for the coming year or so before we are going to go back up. So yeah, this is going to be a tough beer market. But again, we have to just look at what the Fed is doing. Now, there's good news and there's bad news. A recession is coming. So the, the GDP estimate here of the Atlanta Fed is saying we are in a recession. We have about um, a contraction of the economy of about 2%. Now, this Fed metric has been extremely accurate. It has basically never been wrong. So we're going to see GDP going negative again for two quarters in a row here in the US. This is again what I've predicted. As I told you guys, the economy is addicted to free stimulus, to low interest rates. That's how our economy is growing. That's why you see such a large trend of the interest rates just going down and down. And that's why you're seeing debt going up so much. Without debt, you can't have any positive economic growth. Now, we all already knew this. I already predicted this here for you. But what does this mean? Well, if the Fed wants to have any kind of economic uh, growth, they're going to have to bring in the stimulus checks. They have to start printing money again. And they have to probably top even the printing of money that they did back in 2019. Because as a drug addict, as you guys know, you know, a drug addict constantly needs more and more drugs to get that same high that they normally get in the past. So... When you have a very normal functioning economy, you know, back here in the 70s, for instance, just printing a little bit of money would have given phenomenal economic growth. But as you know, if you keep doing it and keep printing and keep printing money, the effect eventually kind of loosens out, just like an addict. So we had this big sugar rush that we got through our economy back in 2019, and now we're dealing here with the side effects, which is inflation. Now, why am I telling this? Well, first of all, if there's a recession incoming, it means that the Fed has to lower interest rate again to fight inflation. Now, we also have to look at the unemployment level. That's going to be a very important uh, indicator. I would say that unemployment level is probably going to be a more important indicator than just watching the GDP growth. Because what I think is that the Fed is really trying to do is that they're trying to uh, decrease the job market here because the job market is so incredibly tight. There's so much people, so many companies that are looking for new employees. And so what you're seeing is they're pushing up the prices here and they're pushing up the prices of products to eventually go and pay off these employees that they're missing. So you're seeing wages increase. And this is, of course, resulting in inflation because eventually it has to be calculated back to the consumer. So what is going to be the most important thing here is we want to see wages potentially stabilizing. We want to see the job market going uh, tightening here. We want to see companies having pain. We want to see them going having a layoffs. We are going to really see Tesla has a layoff, Coinbase has layoffs. But the most important thing here, 
uh, that we want to see is again we want to see the economy contracting and that's going to loosen up you know a little bit of employment but then we're going over here to the next phase which means getting the economy back on the real the fed is probably going to be able to fight inflation here for a little bit but as i already told you guys this is how hyperinflation works because if the Fed wants to create, again, economic growth again, or they have to bail out banks because, you know, increasing of interest rates is probably going to crash a bunch of banks because they're so over leveraged. You know, our whole economy is basically a mess. So things are going to break probably very soon. You know, maybe inflation is going to go down, but then the Fed has to come back in again and start printing money again to create positive GDP growth because they can't have a recession for the many, many months, right? They might be able to handle a recession here for one, two, three, four quarters, but what are they going to do next? They're just, we're just going to have a long, extremely recession that's going to last years. Well, of course not. Eventually, they have to start printing back money again. When is that going to happen? Well, I think, again, what you're going to see is you're going to see inflation that's going to come down. You're going to see a recession. You're going to see unemployment going up. You're going to see things breaking in our economic system. The Fed will come in and then again print money. They will try to bring a new sugar rush in our economy. Right, as an addict, as you guys know. And again, that is again going to put the inflation again back to the upside. So whatever the Fed is doing right now, fighting inflation, it's only going to be temporary before we're going to see more inflation again engulf in our economy. Because again, we need the printing of money to sustain our level of debt. You know, the US runs a massive trade deficit. The only thing they can do is just print more money so they can send it to China so they can get free products in return. It is basically a Ponzi scheme paying off their previous debt with printing of new money. And so our economy is basically completely dependent on it. And so it eventually has to restart again. But for now, especially right now, because the US is the only one who's increasing interest rates, we're seeing a massive strengthening in the dollar. This is potentially giving the US some leverage here to increase interest rates for a little bit without completely going bankrupt. And they also probably will be able to lose in their um, they probably also won't be able to fight inflation here for a little bit, but again, it's only going to be temporary. And so, yeah, the, the thing that I'm watching here right now is just really what is GDP doing? But what, I, what is more important is what is unemployment doing? Once we're really going to see GDP going extremely negative, followed by a large layoff, and finally the job market finally loosening up here a little bit. And, you know, that will probably result in inflation topping out here a little bit. And then we're going to see interest rate being lowered and then we're going to see probably new uh, stimulus or printing of money or you know i mean they are they're they're definitely going to print back <laughs> money again but when it's going to happen it's all going to depend on here on the job market if the job market is going to lose in here then i'm going to prepare for a massive bitcoin bull market again so yeah as long as the dollar is just going up here and the Fed is going to continue to tighten economic policy and nothing is going to break, no major banks are going to go under, we're going to expect, you know, I'm going to expect that Bitcoin is just not going to go up. So it's going to go sideways here. I think that we have hit our bottom area. I think we're going to do something very similar as what we saw probably back here in 2015. We're going to have quite an extended beer market that's going to last us to about eight months. We're going to go sideways. It's going to be volatile. Again, we could come back up here, maybe test 25,000 US dollar at a maximum before eventually coming back down. I think that the range that we could establish here is between 25,000 US dollar, 15,000 US dollar, but it's an accumulation stage. It's going to last for quite a long time. A lot of people are going to stop watching these videos, you know, they're going to move on with their life, they're going to, going to forget about Bitcoin. That's exactly the type of, of, of behavior that we want to see here in this market, because that's going to give us our bottom. We want to see depression, we want people see, you know, giving up here on the crypto market, and then slowly the experts can start to accumulate here Bitcoin on these lower levels and start to actually prepare for the Fed to actually lower interest rates. We're now seeing the pain here in the economy. We're seeing that the interest rates are hurting Bitcoin, now we are waiting for this to again change. Again, Bitcoin moves in cycles. We all know it moves in cycles and so does the dollar. So does the Fed with their increases of interest rates and lowering of interest rates. All of those things move in cycles. And now we're simply waiting here for the bear cycle to end so we can finally get the bull cycle back and hopefully get rich. <laughs> That's what we're doing here. So this was the end of the video. Yeah, I mean, I really don't have a, a massive bullish prediction. It all really just depends on the Fed. I think we're going to go sideways here. But, you know, to be a market, you also sometimes kind of got to enjoy it. 
because now all the speculators and the altcoiners are kind of a little bit silent. So enjoy it for a while, pick up some cheap Bitcoin. I get no financial advice, do whatever you want. But that's just my opinion here on the market. So thank you guys so much for watching. Again, please sign up on my Bitcoin affiliate link if you want to get access to the private channel and the indicator. Once you are signed up, send me a DM on Telegram. And as well, follow me here on Twitter. I posted here this thread if you want to check it out. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. I'm going to post more threads like this on Twitter. So if you're not yet following me, why not? It's free. Get free content. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope to see you guys here in my next video. Bye bye.